I just started the recording. So today is Wednesday, April 1st. We are talking today about federal and local funding options for businesses and have a few speakers with us today. I will uh, introduce them and we will go through the information. Again, this is recorded and we'll make it available on our resource site, which is visit stlc.com forward slash COVID-19. The recording will be available there. So I'd uh, like to introduce Patrick Kelly from the St. Lawrence County Industrial Development Agency to talk about the new loan program they have available. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Brooke, and, and thank you to the Chamber for giving us a forum to talk about the activities that are going on right now. Uh, the first thing I'd point out is, so people are aware, what we've been trying to do at the IDA is coordinate as much information and as many resource partners as we can, both within the county, in the region, and, and with our state and federal partners to try to get a, as clear of an understanding of the various programs that are out there as we can, and then utilize our network and our contacts to try to get in front of as many employers and companies as possible to try to help, for lack of a better word, demystify what's going on right now. Um, we've created on our website, which is slcida.com, a special COVID section uh, primarily tailored for for business assistance information. Um, but as, as new COVID related updates come out, we're trying to keep everything in a clear, concise uh, format. We're updating that website where people can look at local programs, state programs, federal programs, and then a, a collection of everything else that may be of of importance to people. Uh, we should have that revamped hopefully by the end of today so it's a little easier to navigate. One of the challenges that's going on is there's so much information out there and there's so many bulletins and there's so many updates and it's changing so quickly that it's easy to become lost and, and frustrated with the process. So we're trying to bring as much personal outreach to the situation as we can. Uh, we've had direct contact with almost 200 businesses at this point. Um, if somebody listening has questions and they have not been contacted by us or, or don't know how to reach us, you can contact us through the website. Um, as we update it, we're going to put out a, a press release today. And Brooke, I'll get a copy of that to you that gives direct contact for us so people can get to us. Um, if, if people are struggling right now and they're not understanding where they fit in with some of these programs, we might not have all the answers, but I'm hoping that by being sort of in the middle of all this traffic, we can gain things from, from our individual discussions with the service providers and with the businesses and try to find ways to make it easier for people to understand uh, what, what they may have at their disposal. In terms of our own programs, just, just to give a, a quick update, we have about a $6 million loan portfolio that we manage across our various entities within the, the IDA structure. Uh, back on March 16th, when we sent out our billing notices for April payments, we offered a three-month principal and interest moratorium where no interest will accrue to everybody within our, our portfolio. Uh, we worked with a number of different regional partners, including the North Country Alliance, the North Country Economic Development Fund, uh, the Greater Messina Economic Development Fund, the Ogdensburg Growth Fund, among others, to try to have some consistency. So if we had packaged a deal and somebody is a borrower of ours with one of our partner lenders, that they got the same consistent treatment from us. So we've had a number of companies take, take that opportunity to, to let's have our loan payments be one less challenge for people right now. We're, we'll look at it, put it off for three months, and then we'll, let's see where we are as we get closer to the end of that three-month period. I think our, our viewpoint is where, where we can be flexible and where we can provide relief within local control. We want to do that as, as much as we possibly can. So the, the 
takeaway I would have is, again, we're trying to be out there. We're trying to talk to people. We're trying to be available. If you're not, if you don't consider yourself a typical uh, potential IDA applicant for whatever reason, I would push that aside. I mean, I think at this point, company size, industry type, none of that stuff matters. I mean, this is a way we're all trying to work together to figure out how do we help, how do we preserve, how do we maintain what we have so that when this does end, we're positioned to come out of it as, as quickly as, as we possibly can. So to that end, one of the things that we knew we didn't have enough of was quick emergency capital. We were getting calls and having conversations with companies that were saying, we're, we know there might be federal help, we, we know there might be state help, but we don't have anything, you know, how do, how do we pay the power bill this month? You know, when, when restaurants all of a sudden have no customers and, and retail shops have no, you know, have no open hours, the, the revenue goes away, but the, the, you know, the fixed costs remain. So we worked with the North Country Alliance, of, of which we're a, a partner member, uh, to try to create something that was as, as quickly deliverable as possible. And that's the Working Capital Relief Program. At this point, I'm going to turn the call over to Michelle Capone from the Development Authority of the North Country, which administers a number of regional loan programs, including the ones operated by the North Country Alliance. And Michelle? Uh Oh, sorry, Patrick, this is Brooke. Just uh, just to pause, because we had a lot of people join in. Um, so I just wanted to reintroduce you before Michelle continues on. But for those who've just joined, this is a St. Lawrence County Chamber hosting a call on funding opportunities. Uh, Patrick Kelly from the St. Lawrence County Industrial Development Agency was just speaking about what the IDA is doing. Um, and today is April 1st and we are recording this session. So if you did hop on late, we'll be posting this to visit stlc.com forward slash COVID-19. All right, Michelle, uh, carry on. Thank you for that. And, and thank, thank, thank you, you Brooke. Michelle, before you get started, in terms of call flow, just so people know, Michelle's going to talk about the NCA Working Capital Fund. Dale Rice is going to talk about the Small Business Development Center role. And then Dan Rickman is going to talk about the SBA and, and the federal programs. And we thought that we'd let everybody do their presentation. And then at the end, we'll, we'll do questions and general discussion just to try and keep some, some order to a call with 75 people on it. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Patrick, and thank you, Brooke, and the St. Lawrence County Chamber for asking us to be here today. Um, as Patrick mentioned, I work for the Development Authority of the North Country in our business and housing loan programs. Um, one of the programs that we administer on behalf of the region is the North Country Alliance, um, which covers Jefferson, Lewis, St. Lawrence, Clinton, Essex, Franklin, Hamilton counties. And it's made up of economic development agencies and organizations, um, healthcare, utilities, private businesses, you name it, across the seven county region. Um, in order to be responsive um, to our, the current issues that are, we are facing due to COVID-19, we created a COVID-19 emergency business relief program. Um, again, it's available to those businesses in the seven county region. The maximum loan amount is up to uh, $25,000 for businesses that have over 20 full-time equivalent employees. And up to $10,000 for businesses that have under 20 full-time equivalent employees. Um, and by that, we mean that on 12-31-19, um, a full-time person equals one full-time person, uh, part-time people, two part-time people equal one, time full, equal one full-time person. So we can help you through the application process to figure out how much you're eligible for. But um, again, up to $10,000 for businesses under 20 full-time equivalent employees and over, um, over 20 full-time equivalent employees, it's $25,000. The term would be not to exceed uh, 60 months or five years at 5% fixed. We would offer principal and interest moratorium for the first three months. So no payment would be due the first three months and interest would not accrue. Then for the next six months, it would be interest only payments. And then after that, principal and interest payments to fully amortize the loan. Um, the collateral is primarily the personal and corporate guarantees of the business. We would look at the collateral as well. Um, eligible businesses are for-profit and not-for-profit entities with under 100 full-time equivalent employees. 
ineligible businesses are newspapers, broadcasting, media, healthcare, civic and community centers, libraries, and farms. However, agribusiness is eligible. There is no prepayment penalty. We're not charging any fees for this program. Um, other special conditions, um, startup businesses, if you've been in business for less than 12 months, are not eligible. Um, a business must be able to provide at least two years of tax returns unless you've only been in business for the past over 12 months, then it would be the one-year tax return. And the applicant should have an average minimum FICO score of at least 620 to qualify and a debt service coverage ratio of at least one-to-one -one, uh, based upon your year in tax returns. So I know it's a lot of information that was pretty specific that was right off of our program description. However, if you want to apply for the program, I would suggest you um, can reach out to Patrick Kelly at his office at the St. Lawrence County IDA, um, or you can go to the northcountryalliance.org website and find the application there, or by contacting myself, M. Capone, M-C-A-P-O-N-E, at dank, D-A-N-C dot org, and we can get you this information. Um, as Patrick mentioned, we've been working very closely, the Development Authority has been working very closely with our IDA partners um, and providing support through these trying times. Uh, just to give you an idea quickly about what the Development Authority is doing, um, we've also followed Patrick's lead and the other economic development agencies in offering three months of principal interest moratorium for our businesses that already have loans with us. So if your business already has a loan with us and you're on the phone today, please reach out to me and we can talk to you about um, these payment deferrals. <clears throat> We also have our existing loan programs for tourism and businesses. Uh, we also administer the North Country Economic Development Fund. So we do have a variety of other loan programs available um, that you can look at uh, as we're recovering through this process. So with that, I think um, I've covered the information on the North Country Alliance, Patrick. And I guess I'll turn it back to you for the introductions of, I believe, Dale Rice. Thank you, Michelle, very much. I think most people are familiar with what the Small Business Development Center is and, and what their function is, but I'll, I'll leave it to Dale to give an update on that. Um, I would just say that we have been working with the Small Business Development Center for years, and certainly that's been heightened over the past two or three weeks, and they are a primary referral resource for us. Um, as an operator of loan programs and incentive packages, we don't typically help individuals or companies put together business plans, but we partner with the Small Business Development Center and, and they provide that kind of service for us. So there's a lot of, of back and forth. So if you're looking for information about what we do or what Michelle does or, or Dan or, or anything that's out there, um, I, I heartily recommend people working with the Small Business Development Center because they, they know the systems, they know the processes, they know the people. And with that, Dale, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Patrick. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give a quick update about the SVDC. Um, we've been working remotely for the last three weeks. Um, our activity for the last three weeks, each week has pretty much doubled. Uh, so Linda, Michelle, and Jen have been doing a great job trying to keep up with that. They're working a lot of hours, nights, weekends. Um, it's going to be tough to keep up with that. We realize that, but we want to make sure we get back to you as quick as possible. Um, we do have some help on the way. It looks like we're going to be able to hire some additional business advisors that will be dedicated just for disaster recovery. Um, in the short term, we've identified some successful business owners whose businesses are idle now. Um, but we're going to tap into their experience um, and have them work with businesses right away. And then long term, um, probably till about September of 2021, um, we think we're going to be able to add one to two business advisors that all they'll be doing is working with disaster recovery. Um, normally with the SVDC, you know, a big part of what we do and what I always tell people is our job is to prepare structure and point people in the right direction. Um, we know all the programs. Um, we know who to who to point the you know wh where to send them. Um, but that's in normal times. Now we're definitely not in normal time where there's new programs. There's programs today that we didn't have you know yesterday or even a week ago. 
Um, so our business advisors have been doing a great job trying to get up to speed on all these programs. Um, fortunate for us, we've got great, great partnerships with Dan at the SBA, who you'll be hearing from next and, you know, Brooke at the County Chamber, Patrick at the IDA, you know, the list goes on and on, the chambers, the colleges. Um, so we're fortunate that we live in a community where, where there's um, a lot of collaboration. Um, hopefully um, we can get back to you as quick as, <laughs> as you would like. We know businesses are frustrated trying to learn these programs. We're doing the best we can um, to get the information out to you. What I would recommend is that you go to our state website. Um, it's just nyssbdc.org. If you're looking for some assistance and just click on the make an appointment, or you can call our office at uh, 315-386-7312. The calls are not getting directly um, forwarded to the counselors. We, you, you'll have to leave a message, um, but we're checking that machine every 15 minutes and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so that's really how I want to mention, just kind of give an update on how we're operating our office and uh, hang in there. <laughs> Thanks, Dale. Uh, yep. Dan, you, you are probably more than anybody we know in the middle of trying to understand and process and disseminate information about uh, the federal government assistance program. So you want to give a summary of of what your office does and, and what you're trying to do and, and how these programs might help us? Sure, sure thing, Patrick. Um, th thanks uh, for having us participate in this call. So, um, so my name is Dan Rickman. I'm with the U.S. Small Business Administration. Um, I am part of the Upstate New York District Office, um, the Deputy District Director. And, you know, typically our role is working with um, our bank partners um, on our loan guarantee programs, as well as working with our SBA funded partners like the Small Business Development Center Network and others across the state to help provide technical assistance for small businesses, just generally with everything they need with respect to getting um, started or expanding their business. Now, of course, these are not normal times um, and um, that triggers, um, that's triggered a lot of um, new activities for us. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and, and, and start talking about what's available and, and what we're getting a lot of questions about um, right now as, as with respect to immediate or soon to be immediate assistance available for small businesses. And that's the Paycheck Protection Program um, that was uh, passed as part of the CARES Act last Friday. Um, there's um, uh, that program is uh, scheduled to be available and live uh, by Friday, this Friday, April 3rd. As you can imagine, it takes some time to uh, build up a program from scratch and write the rules and, and get new lenders onboarded um, because an important uh, uh, distinction for this program that is that it is uh, falls under our guaranteed loan program. So those are loans that um, you apply to your uh, bank if they're a participating SBA lender um, and the bank, you know, underwrites processes and, and disperses these loans. Okay. Um, again, we're looking to have that available by Friday, but generally speaking, um, certainly SBA, current SBA participating lenders um, will be pretty well prepared by Friday. Uh, assuming we're able to flip the switch and get our systems turned on by then um, to dis process and disperse these loans. Um, our understanding um, from everything that we're hearing from DC is that these loans may be um, uh, processed and dispersed as quickly as the same day, okay? Um, now, what are these loans for? As the, as the um, name of it uh, describes, they're primarily designed uh, to give employers the ability to keep and retain or even rehire uh, employees. And uh, the major, you know, component and incentive for this is um, up to eight or eight weeks of um, payroll costs may be forgiven as a function of this loan program. Okay, um, they've expanded quite a bit of the eligibility for this program. So, if you, any employer with under 500 employees, any small business with under 500 employees, or not-for-profit organization, or sole proprietor, or even independent contractors and self-employed individuals may apply for this program. Okay, the amount they're able to apply for is up to 2.5 times their average monthly payroll from last year. Okay. Um, 
the eligible use of proceeds for this loan is well certainly payroll and benefits um, and in addition uh, rent utilities uh, or mortgage interest can be paid through this uh, paycheck protection uh, loan at the end of the eight weeks um, depending on how many employees you've kept on board if you've kept a hundred percent of your employees from when you started and, and got the loan um, up to 100% of that, uh, those eligible costs will be forgiven, okay? Um, if that doesn't happen, then it's going to be reduced by the percentage of employees that you keep. That's kind of the idea behind it. Um, so essentially, it converts into a grant, the portion of the loan that will be forgivable at the end of the eight weeks. Um, so for businesses that have, um, might need, have additional working capital needs. Um, what is available right now and has been available since uh, New York and the rest of the country, the country were declared as a disaster area are SBA's economic injury disaster loans. Um, there were some enhancements to the, uh, we call it the EIDL loan, the IDL loan program uh, as a function of the CARES Act. Um, those went into effect on Monday and we put a new uh, implemented a new application process and uh, some new forms on our website at sba.gov slash disaster. And um, it also increased the, the potential eligibility. More entities can apply for the EIDL loan program. And um, again, that loan is for uh, essentially um, any typical you know, working capital need for a business, okay? Whether it's accounts payable, certainly payroll, um, you know, purchasing inventory, all of those things that you need to keep your business up and running um, for um, the next six months, up to six months, okay? And those loans are up to $2 million uh, per applicant. And um, um, importantly, the CARES Act added a $10,000 forgivable advance as part of that loan application, okay? Uh, so this is something you can tap into immediately if you initiate an economic injury disaster loan um, application. There's a new form we've added to that process where um, you can select this $10,000 um, forgivable advance that it will be forgiven whether you choose to accept the economic injury disaster loan. You know, the processing does take up to two or three weeks um, or are declined or any other circumstance that $10,000 $10, advance will be forgivable. So also converting into a grant essentially. Um, beyond that, something to keep, keep the, be, just be aware of generally is with SBA programs, you can't duplicate the purpose of the loan. So if for example, um, Friday, when the PPP loans open up um, and you take advantage from that program, then you know, you're taking advantage of eight weeks of the expenses we've, we've, we have outlined. Um, that would not be something you would include in your idle loan request, for example. Okay, so just think about in terms of, you know, can't use the loan for the same purposes for the same time period. Otherwise, you can benefit from both of those programs. So um, some of the rules for the PPP program, um, some of the details. Um, well, we're still writing rules. Um, I expect them uh, to, to be finalized. Um, Maybe today, maybe maybe sometime tomorrow, leading up to the um, um, loans going live on on Friday. Um, but you know, I'm going to continue to send out details to you know our partners like Chamber and Small Business Development Center and the IDA and well, everybody else that I can um, send this information to. Um, and you can also um, get updates on our website sba.gov. Um, there's more information on. Um, uh, on the PPP program as details come out, some of the uh, um, terms and that sort of stuff is available on our website and you can kind of dig in as needed. So I think I could, it's probably a good stopping point and I'll uh, send it back to our leaders here if uh, uh, so maybe launch, launch the Q&A. Thank you, Dan. And for those who are on the call, that was just Dan Rickman from the Small Business Administration. For those who are on computer, I don't believe you can do it by call, um, 
but if you have any questions, if you scroll to the bottom of your screen, there's a chat box there. You can type in your questions right there and you can either send them to me privately or to the group and I can read them out and our panel here can respond to them. So please, uh, now is a great time to ask any question. No question is too small or too silly. So um, feel free to enter those questions into the chat box now. And for everyone who's joined a little bit late, just to let you know, um, this is being recorded. So if you missed part of it, we'll be uploading it to visit STLC forward slash COVID-19. Um, and again, for everybody and the recording today is April 1st and we know information is changing uh, quickly. Brooke, this is Michelle Capone and I have a question for Dan. Can hey, you hear Michelle. me? Hi. Um, in your uh, explanation, you had mentioned that the payroll protection program covered eight weeks of payroll, and if they kept the people on for the entire time, it would be 100% forgivable. What if companies have already laid off their employees um, by Friday when this program is rolled out? Can they apply for the, the payroll funding, or is, is that not eligible? It would, it, so my understanding, um, again, pending final rules, you know, because I haven't seen like our those, uh, procedures and stuff yet, but my understanding is rehiring employees is also a part of the intent of this. So if you're, uh, if you say that you're going to have 40 employees, okay, for the period of that eight weeks and you have 20 now, for example, because you're going to rehire them all on Monday, okay, then that's that's what we're going to base the forgivable component. On. Okay. So okay. would it be able to increase the um, forgivable amount after the fact? It, it's only decreased based on what your projections for employees are, as I understand it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good thing. All right, we do have several questions coming in now. So uh, thank you to our audience and please continue to type in your questions. Um, this is a good question for Dan. Hair salon owners would like to apply for PPP. What if their hairdressers just pay rent for the chairs? Do they count as payroll or would they apply individually as sole proprietors? So, uh, it, you know, I, I hate qualifying everything. It does depend on um, how they operate their business. You know, I think it would, the, the analogy would be, you know, landlords, you know, uh, somebody who owns a hair salon is kind of like a landlord, right? And landlords are eligible to apply. They don't have employees. Um, they have tenants. Um, but for the perspective of their own income, their own salary, um, and their own uh, operating expenses for their business, their own rent for the facility, for example, um, as I understand it, that would be, you know, an eligible expense. Um, I hope that kind of answers it. So they, they could apply for their other expenses, but the salon owner would not be applying for the hairdressers? The hairdressers well, so the hairdressers would, would be um, independent contractors, business owners in and of themselves, and they would also be eligible to apply for PPP. Okay, but they would apply themselves. They would apply separately. That's my understanding. Okay, that makes sense. Um, someone asked, uh, who are SBA lenders in our area that can facilitate the PPP? And um, maybe that's something, Dan, that we can get the list and put up on our COVID site and um, Patrick may already have yeah. the IDA yeah. site. Yeah, um, that would probably be the best thing. So just something to keep in mind is we've got our existing SBA lenders and some of the ones up there, Watertown Savings, for example, um, yeah, some of the large banks that have branches in St. Lawrence County, they're participating lenders. Um, but this program is going to be opened up so that current banks that, you know, have never done an SBA loan um, can apply to be a PPP lender, if you will. Um, so there is no list of those folks yet because, again, yeah, you know, the program's not, not, not fully launched. Um, so I would expect at some point we'll be able to uh, post that on our website and you'll be able to um, um, search um, for um, local institutions uh, that beyond the current list um, of, of folks that are current SBA participating lenders. Thank you, Dan. And again, we will get that out and get that posted. Go ahead. It, it, this is Patrick. I'm just 
just so people know, the existing list includes Community Bank, Governor Savings and Loan, Key Bank, NBT, CECOM, Farm Credit East. I'm trying to think of. I, I think that that's it. We, we'll we'll have a list posted as well. And like Dan said, there's there's more who are going to be added. Um, Upstate National Bank is another one. North Country Savings Bank. So it's it's primarily you know the the banks and financial institutions that that most people deal with. If they're not a lender now, they very well may be. So that's you know a call to your banker is certainly a, a, a good idea. Thank you, Patrick. And I think that's been our our general. Uh, reminder to people that hopefully you're in touch with your lenders about uh, any opportunity to delay payments, but also to check in with them to see who the appropriate person is at the bank to talk to about the programs available and if they can assist you. They know you best, so that banking relationship is extremely important right now. Um, we have a question, Dan, I think again, are the forgiven portions going to be taxed, the $10,000 grant or forgiven portion? Um, short answer, I don't know, um, because again, haven't seen the final rules yet. Um, so anything would be kind of speculation on my part. I know there was some mention in, in the CARES Act about certain things being, um, taxes being waived uh, as taxable income, but I, I, not being a tax expert, uh, I can't provide tax advice. And of course, again, the rules have not been finalized yet. So I know it's, I know it's sometimes, it, you know, folks don't want to hear that, but, um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, the, the legislation says one thing, but it's not final until, you know, the agencies issue the regulations. So the IRS would have to issue the regulations on that particular part of the legislation. So I wouldn't be qualified to comment, I'm sorry. Thank you, Dan, and we'll keep uh, people updated as we do get that information. Um, for the service industry, when you're calculating wages for PPP, do tips reported as part of payroll apply? Um, to my understanding, yes. And I believe there's going to be additional calculations um, for that scenario um, when the final kind of forms and, and um, application guidelines come out. So pending to TBD. Uh, that's another one, I think. All right. Um, and again, we'll keep that information coming as it becomes available. Uh, a question for confirmation, just to confirm with the EI, EIDL, if you decide not to take the loan on account of not needing it or some other reason, the advance then becomes a grant. There has been a bit of confusion around whether it becomes a grant only if they are denied. So um, it will be forgivable whether you accept it, whether you declined, whether you declined yourself the loan. That's the language I've seen. So, um, in fact, I think we sent out something similar to anybody that uh, via email to anybody that perhaps applied for an EIDL loan. Um, prior to Monday, we sent out a notification saying, hey, hey here's how these idle advances for um, those of you who already applied should, will work. And, you know, for those of you on the call that have already applied um, prior to Monday, okay, the guidance is to go back into the idle, the new application form and um, go through it again so you can make that idle advance request and benefit from that um, um, advance slash grant. So um, I don't have the official language, but this is what I've seen um, that have come out and that's my understanding of it right now. All right, and all your information is uh, readily available on sba.gov. Is that right? As it becomes available? <laughs> yes, most of it is available. Um, I'm, I'm providing some, um, some, some interpretation of my part um, as things come on the website, or at least clarifying it, because I think we all know sometimes with our federal program, it's not always clear when you're looking at uh, stuff on our website. So, um, but yes, um, they are adding that official, you know, they, they, they want to wait until we have the official rules in place before they post on our website sometimes. Um, but that's, 
that will be added as we kind of as, as we kind of move through this over the coming days. And if it's not there and you have a question, you know, you can always reach out to our office if you have uh, questions about this stuff. All right. And we talked about the SBA, local SBA lenders offering support with PPP. Are they also going to be able to offer EIDL? No, that's a separate, um, the EIDL loan is, is an entirely different process. It's a direct loan from SBA. So the only way to apply for that is through our website, sba.gov slash disaster. All right. Um, is there any written guidance that can be shared regarding the documentation needed for the, um, the 10K EIDL loan to grant conversion? So if you, um, not specifically with respect to the $10,000 advance, but the documentation you need is the same as you would need for the normal loan application, right? So the, 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 the normal EIDL loan business application is still part of the process, okay? So as you go through the um, the new portal that launched Monday, um, it kind of it's kind of it's it's fairly straightforward. I've I've gotten some positive feedback from folks that have gone through this new form. Um, you know, if you dig down deep into our website, you can find the old form still. Um, you know, you got to click about four four or five different links to get to it. That stuff's still available, and the information that I. I've sent out that, you know, um, um, some of our partners have like SBDC, you know, those forms, they still exist somewhere. You know, that's what these electronic portals are based on and they can be used as a, um, just kind of general, general guidelines on the type of questions that the electronic form is gonna ask you for. But generally, you know, who owns the company, tax returns, you know, those, those types of things that you may be familiar with from a business app for uh, any any type of business loan you've applied for in the past. Um, but again, the 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 advance slash grant, you know, is not dependent on anything other than you submitting your application completely, as I understand it, and and um, completing that form. So. All right, and you mentioned taxes. Do 2019 completed taxes need to be included? If they're available, if not, then you would um, base it on 2018. All right. Um, someone's uh, asking if you can elaborate on payroll and eligible benefits with regards to the PPP program. And um, also said the bill provides for a limited amount. Is there a risk of running out of funds? Um, so uh, I can I guess I'll address the first question uh, first in terms of the um, eligible um, expenses, um, and there are some limits, um, you know, in terms of owner salary or um, individuals that make more than a hundred thousand um, dollars. There's some limits, you know, based on that. Um, those types of criteria. Um, again, haven't seen the final, haven't seen the final, final uh, rules yet. So, or, you know, the little uh, calculation cheat sheet. So I wouldn't want to get too deep into the um, uh, calculations for this yet. Um, but my understanding is that, you know, that is inclusive of benefits, uh, paid sick leave, things of that nature. Okay. Um, and then in addition, um, rent, utilities, and or mortgage interest is all, um, those are all eligible um, for both the, for, to be used for the use of proceeds as well as um, to be forgiven, depending on what the ultimate um, um, employee count is. Oh, there was a part two, wasn't there? What was the part two, Brooke? <laughs> Can the funds run out? Like, should people hurry up and get yeah. those? Um, I, I mean, so I, you know, I can't speak for Congress, but I don't think that's likely at all. Um, I, I don't think that's likely. And you'll hear about it before they run out. That's for, that's for sure. So um, they put, I don't know, a lot, a lot of money in, in SBA's account at Treasury. Yes. 
All right, still good to, to get it in because the quicker you'll get your money too. Exactly. Exactly. Um, just a clarification on um, full-time equivalent. Is it is it based on an hourly um, amount or how is, how is a full-time equivalent employee counted? Um, so this is where I'm speculating and I'm not sure if Michelle on, on their programs, they, they had an FTE, but typically when you're calculating FTEs, it's going to be the total hours of all employees, you know, that you've actually paid and then you divide it by 40 to figure out what your, uh, full-time equivalent number of employees is. Uh, but again, I haven't seen the, you know, as it applies to PPP, um, the, the, the calculations, I haven't seen them yet. So, but I'm going to assume they're going to be something similar to that. So around that 40 hour a I week would, mark. I okay. would expect that to be accurate. And there was a follow-up question about whether or not contractors um, are included in the PPP. I think, as we mentioned before with hairdressers, any contractors would be eligible, but they would apply individually because they are their own business, correct? They wouldn't. Well, yeah, so that, that would be, that would might be my kind of intuitive understanding of that. Um, I think it's compounded by the fact that um, some of these contractors and self-employed individuals will also be eligible for unemployment. Um, so, which I am not qualified to, to speak to, to speak about. Um, but if there's going to be a distinction there, I would expect that to be the case. But again, you know, if I, if, 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 when the final rules are published, and this is something that's very different from what I'm speculating on here, then it's something we'll highlight in our communications to, um, you know, our partners and, and, and to businesses, so. All right, thank you. Um, what is the time frame that IDLE covers? Is it February to June? Is it March to June? What is the time frame? So IDLE um, starts from um, the period from which you are, um, your, uh, for, your, for your economic injury for IDLE is, I believe it was January 31st. Um, I'd have to look it up. Um, it's on the uh, disaster declaration itself. And you are eligible to make an IDLE loan application for one year. Um, from the disaster declaration. So I think that answers the question, but um, that's what we're talking about for IDLE. If you're talking about PPP, if that's a maybe a follow-up question, um, I'm not sure when the clock starts in the eight weeks. It's an excellent question that I have indeed asked. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that it's from when funds are dispersed, um, but I, I may have seen some information out there that um, it, it, it may extend to uh, further back in the disaster for employers that, for example, um, have managed to retain employees through this process. But that's definitely, definitely going to be one of those um, um, subject to our final rulemaking um, um, determinations. All right. Thank you. And Dan, I don't know how much time you have. We have we have a lot. We have 21 <laughs> questions um, <laughs> still. So I can also pull these and um, we can yeah, put them into so, a Q&A and see, yeah. see what we can have answered there as well. I can maybe if you if you I've got time, if you like, I can scroll through the group chat here and, and just kind of answer some of them based on how many um, similar questions I've been getting. Um, if you'd like me to do that. Sure, if you want to, if you want to do that. Um, foreign ownership for SBA programs, you know, particularly U.S. subsidiaries of Canadian companies. Um, the answer is it does depend on the entity's of, um, eligibility otherwise. So if we're talking about idle um, and inclusive of the parent entity, if they're still considered a small business concern, um, they may be eligible for the idle program. Okay, so, you know, if that Canadian, you know, owner was a $3 billion company, well, they wouldn't be eligible necessarily, okay? That, that probably wouldn't make very much sense, right? Um, but if the, in total, the, the, the affiliated entities were still considered a small business um, and the beneficiary of the economic injury loan was substantially, you know, um, um, you, the U.S. operations of that entity, right? paying U.S. employees, U.S. taxes, then it would be el certainly eligible to apply and, and possibly would be eligible to benefit from EIDL. Um, PPP, 
I hate to do the cop out. I'm, I'm not sure yet um, when it comes to um, what the rules are going to be for um, non US ownership. Um, that's um, since it falls under our normal um, loan guarantee program, typically the answer would be no. Um, um, US operations that were uh, majority owned by uh, foreign entities would not be eligible. We have a requirement of 51% uh, US citizenship or legal permanent residence. That's another thing to keep in mind, legal permanent residence. If the Canadian citizen is a legal permanent resident of the US operating the company here, then it would be okay. Um, but for the more complex scenarios, um, that's gonna, that does remain to be seen. Um, farms are um, not eligible uh, for the EIDL program, okay, um, that is something that um, uh, I haven't seen any changes due to the, to, from the CARES Act. Farmers can benefit from, you know, farm service agencies, low interest, flexible term loans. So I kind of recommend f farmers um, talk with their uh, local county office with the farm service agency. Um, the PPP program, um, I think they might be. Um, again, I haven't seen the the, the final language, but um, you know, farmers and and um, other ag related businesses that derive a majority of their revenues from their farm operations. Um, you know, certainly some of those entities have been able to benefit from our um, guaranteed loan programs in the past, and I didn't see anything that would preclude them from benefiting from PPP. So I'm going to put a, 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 a maybe slash probably. Um, and of course, once we get the final guidelines, we'll, we'll blast that out to, to everyone uh, and their cousins and, and everybody else. Um, new businesses, seasonal businesses, you know, that, that's all valid and relevant. And, you know, when, in terms of making the loan applications, you just need to speak to your circumstances that um, are different from that regular monthly operations type of business, okay? Um, you're not disqualified from these loans if you have uh, money in the bank. If you have a lot of money in the bank, um, the EIDL loan might not, not, might not be something you'd get approved for. You know, you'd be considered to have credit elsewhere if you were uh, personally wealthy and, and had tons of personal liquidity um, or business liquidity um, that would get you through this next uh, six months of, of operating expenses for, for, for um, the idle program. Um, there does not appear to be any limitations to that for PPP. Dan, can I uh, pause you for a second? I realize sure. that I got some private messages coming uh -huh. in here too that you wouldn't be able to see. And I think this one is um, good and might hit several of our members for sure. Um, the PPP P guidelines state you can only apply one time per applicant. If an individual owns multiple businesses, which we have a lot here, is it the business that counts as an applicant or the individual themselves? So can can all the businesses under the company apply? Yeah, so um, great question. Um, it seems that the um, this 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 would be kind of an underwriting type of question. I haven't seen the the final rules yet, but typically, you know, we would look at the entire operations, right, for framing the request. Um, if those entities were sufficiently separable, okay, um, that would achieve the same type of outcome, if that makes sense. Um, it would still be limited to our total um, uh, the ten million dollar cap. Um, for that business and all their affiliated entities, okay? Um, affiliation rules still apply to our SBA loans, except for a couple of circumstances. Franchises that have um, multiple locations, uh, hospitality-related businesses can uh, make application on a per-location basis um, if they have fewer than 500 employees per location. Um, those are a couple of exceptions to our normal affiliation rules. So I don't want to get into too much detail, but I think that answers the, the uh, broad scope of the question. Pending final guidelines. Thank you. Um, so landlords um, are eligible for idle and PPP. 
So um, kind of similar to the, the salon question, um, landlords are eligible to apply. Um, if they're not getting paid, they're, they're getting injured, right? And if they have employees um, within, for the, for the um, you know, say the management company, for example, for the, land, uh, the landlord operation, um, they would uh, uh, have something to apply for, for PPP. Um, so sole proprietors are included, um, again, with the PPP. Um, I haven't seen the details on how they calculate that self-employment income, um, whether it's via salary or draws, you know, it's probably going to be some sort of reasonable method for determining what their um, income should be, um, but it does remain to be seen. Um, I don't know about specific credit uh, determinations for the PPP loan. I don't think they're going to be very, um, um, I don't know what the term is, but I don't think it's a ma majority major concern. They're more concerned that are these real businesses, right? And do they really have employees? That seems to be the primary intent of this uh, PPP program. Um, the fact that, you know, specifically for the PPP, no personal guarantees are required for the businesses, I think kind of indicates um, that credit is not a primary concern for this uh, program. Um, they're more worried about fraud, I think, than anything. So once folks do complete the idle application um, under the new process, they just need to wait for um, a loan officer from SBA to reach out in oh, additional documentation if they need it. Boston spring invite moved to May 29th, same weekend as the other one. <laughs> I don't think that was a question. <laughs> Sorry, I, I muted that. <laughs> uh, I think that I think I kind of ran through all the stuff I could see in the group chat. Um, great questions, folks. You know, I know a lot of it was wait and see pending, but um, you know, bear with us. I mean, that's all we can ask right now is is bear with us and go apply for Idle right now, right? Because that's you can do that right now. And IDLE's the one that you're going to go to sba.gov to um, get that information. Is that the best way, Dan? Correct. That's one that's not being managed by local lenders. Correct. Correct. All right. Yep. And if you guys need help with, you know, certainly, you know, the financials, Dale will be happy to help. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Are there any other comments or questions from Patrick, Michelle, Dale, uh, thoughts that came up during the conversation or ways that your programs can assist with any of the questions that were asked? Brooke, I, a couple things. One, I would just say that if anybody has questions about this or any of our programs, they can go to any one of us. There is a lot of coordination going on right now. Obviously, we're not going to be able to answer technical questions about the, the specific SBA programs, but we'll work through it with you. We can work with Dale. So if, if you have a question about anything that anybody has to offer right now, it isn't, you're not going to get misdirected if you ask any one of us. We'll work together and try and figure out the best way to help somebody. I, I would just, I, I want to close with, um, a few quick thank yous. I want to thank Brooke and the Chamber for having us on the call and for putting this together. Um, Michelle, Dale, and Dan for presenting. Uh, everybody, if, if I'm sure you're aware, Dan has a huge territory, so I really appreciate you, you spending an hour with us this morning. Dan, I know you've got a lot of, a lot of inquiries and a lot of activity going on right now. Um, I have some of my staff members on the phone who have been doing a tremendous job trying to get out in front of people and contacting people. Um, and I also want to thank the employers, the business community, the members on the call. We have had universal positive and appreciative response from everybody we've contacted. And I know how stressful this is. We, we know how upsetting and, and concerned and scared the business owners are in the employer community and with every interaction we've had people have been gracious they've been appreciative they they understand when we don't have the answers um, it's been you know a, a very positive 
interactions and experience in what is a very negative, scary, un unknown time. So uh, certainly I want to make sure that, that anybody on the call who represents that, that group, uh, we really, really appreciate your your welcomeness, your welcoming of our of our contacts and and the graciousness and flexibility of you're showing us. So thank you. And that's it. Anything else from Michelle or Dale? And I certainly echo everything that Patrick said and do not hesitate to get in touch with any of us. I'll make sure that our COVID site has all the contact information as well at visit STLC forwards or visit stlc.com forward slash COVID-19. Anything else from Dale or Michelle? What's the, they can go to the IDA website for the local loan opportunity as well. And we'll get the list of SBA lenders up on our site. And I'll also pull all of these questions and we can work them into a, a Q&A that we can try to get completed and posted as well. I appreciate all of your questions today. Yeah, Brooke, I'd just like to add, um, Michelle and Jen in our office are willing and able to help with the SBA applications. Um, we can help people get prepared to apply for the NCA or any of the loan programs out there. And I know today's focus has been on the financing, but our advisors are also able to help with some of the other changes that are going on, you know, with the labor programs, paid family leave, any of those sort of things we can help try and navigate as well. Great. And can you just repeat the best way to get in touch with the Small Business Development Center? Yep. They can either call our main line at 386-7312, or if they want to go to um, our, our statewide website, nyssbdc.org, and just click make an appointment. That'll get us all the information and we'll be able to follow up with them. Great, thanks Dale. Anything else, Michelle? No, um, I, if you want, I can, you can share my contact information on your website as well for the North Country Alliance or Matt Sivers as well. Um, we'd be happy to do that. All right, great. Well, thank, I really thank all of our panelists today for being here and sharing this very valuable information. Um, we had about 80 people on the call today, so we certainly will continue to offer information as it becomes available, and uh, there's a lot to, to know. So between reading and hearing from people working in the field as well as um, just really encouraging you to get in touch with your lenders, to get in touch with the IDA, DANK, uh, the SBDC, and the Chamber. We're all here to help you as much as we can um, to, to get through this and, and utilize the programs and opportunities that are available. So again, uh, this is Brooke Rouse from the St. Lawrence County Chamber. We're closing up now. The program has been recorded. Today is April 1st, 2020. And as we know, information is changing frequently. But uh, as of today, we will post this information for you to share and review. Thank you again. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Bye-bye.